probably why it's kind of cool. Look how nice that looks. All right, here we go. The next section talks about volumes of prisms and cylinders. Okay? So the environmental club has a piece of wire mesh that they want to form into an open bottom, open top compost bin. Using one side as a height. You can form a compost bin in the shape of a rectangular prism with all the mess with no overlap, okay? A rectangular prism. So, um, so if we had it this way and we made a rectangle out of it, four sides, okay? How wide would each side be? If we use this, this as the height and this as the base, and we bent it, bent it, bent it, bent it, this would still be a hundred. What would each side be? Fifteen. How would I find the volume of it? Well, the volume of a rectangular prism is the volume of a box. You like the length times the width times the height. Or the area of the base times the height. 15 times 15 times 100. Which is 1, 2, 5, 0, 0. 12,500, right? Now, what if we tipped it the other way? Would it still be the same? So then now the height is 60, right? Turn, and each side of this would be 25. So the volume equals length times width times height, which is 25 times 25 times 60, which is 625 times 60, which is... Are the volumes the same? No, the volume of this one is a lot bigger okay so not not all the time if you like tip something another way and put it together will be the same volume all right so these volumes here we have oblique prisms what's an oblique prism well it's like the leaning tower of pisa it's a leaning prism versus a straight up and down prism so we have boxes think of this as a box a box and a leany box, okay? An oblique prism is a leany box. What are the vo which one of these two will have a bigger volume, the leany box or the straight up and down box? It was a trick question. Donovan is right. They are the same volume. They are the same volume because just imagine them as pieces of paper. If you have pieces of paper all straight up and eight straight up and down in two piles and they're exact same and then you just push it a little bit to the side you still have the same volume of papers there right so that's an oblique prism will have the same volume as a regular prism if they have the same height and the same cross-sectional area at every level so the same base if they have the same shape base at every level and they're the same height, by Cavallari's principle, they'll be the same size. So this one, if this is 20 cross at every shape, and they're the same height, they will have the same volume. Okay? Might take a little more surface area to build it, but it's the same volume for each. Each of them is the same volume, okay? So the volume of a prism is area of the base times height. And, the, why, and you're going, why don't they just say length times width times height? Well, because right, but if you have a triangle, is it length times width times height? No, no it's the area of the base times the height. If you have uh, 
I was drawing too fast. It did not like that. So if we have a hexagonal shaped thing, it's the area of the base times the height. Okay. Now when the when it's a circle base, it's just going to be the area of the base times the height or pi r squared h. Okay. So up there on the wall, I have volumes of cylinders, volumes of rectangular objects. Okay. So I have area of the base times the height, which if it's a box, then it's like times width times height. If it's a triangle or other shape, you just got to find the area of the base, multiply it by the height. Here it's the area of the base times the height, but we know the area of the base is going to be pi r squared every time for a circle. All right. Lanzel needs to store 20 cubic feet of firewood. Can he use the rack shown to store it? Is that going to be enough room in there to store 20 cubic feet of firewood? Okay. Well, let's figure that out. We got to find the area of the base. The area of the base for this is the area of a triangle. What's the area of a triangle? What's one half the base times the height? So it's one half of six times four. Okay, because this is the height of the triangle, this is the base of the triangle. One half of six times four is one half of 24 or 12. Okay, now to find the volume of this thing, the height is actually here, because the height is the distance between the two bases. Okay, the distance between the two bases is the height. So that's the height. So the volume of this is the area of the base times the height, or 24 feet cubed. Can he store his yes. firewood in there? Absolutely. He has some extra room. Marta is repurposing a sandbox as a garden box, and she's buying soil for from her school's fundraiser. Estimate the number of bags she needs to buy of soil to fill in her sandbox. Okay. So... What's the volume that she needs to fill in? Well, the volume is the area of the base times the height. What's the area of the base? 16, because it's 4 times 4. What's the height? 10, right? Wrong! Wrong, 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 wrong. What's wrong with what we just did? No. What's the volume of the sandbox? Because it's definitely not 160. Because it's 10 inches, not 10 foot. <gasps> oh, it's 10 inches, not 10 feet. Ooh, because see how the soil is measured in inches, so we should measure the sandbox in inches. So it's 48 inches by 48 inches. 48 by 48 by 10. Somebody, big number. What be my big number? 23,040. Like that? Yeah. Okay, that's my volume. So I got to figure out the volume of each sack of soil. Now, I'm going to treat them, even though the bags aren't perfectly, aren't perfect, uh, rectangular prisms. I'm going to treat them like a rectangular prism. So the volume of a bag of soil is 10 by 18 by 5. Okay, 10 by 18 by 5. Nine hundred. Nine hundred. So if you take 23,040 divided by 900, how many sacks? So she'll need to buy 26 sacks of soil. Okay, good, good job. Now, this is actually practical use of geometry. We finally got into a time where we can actually use this for real life incidences. Catherine, because we, so you're going to, like drive back and forth to the store six times because you miscalculated how many bags of soil you need? 
No, you measure it out and calculate out how much soil you need. All right. Catherine is using cans of juice to fill a cylindrical pitcher that's 11 inches tall and has a radius of 4 inches. Each can of juice is 6 inches tall with a radius of 2 inches. How many cans will Catherine need? Some of you would just guess. The rest of us are going to figure out what she needs. You could. So, the volume of the big pitcher is pi r squared h. Or 16 times 11 is 176 pi, right? The can of juice, the little can of juice, is volume equals pi r squared h. So it's 24 pi. So you take 176 pi by 24 pi, the, the pi's because they cancel. 176 divided by 24. So she'll need eight cans. To totally fill it up to the brim, I would buy seven cans and call it good. All right. Kimberly is filling a large container with laundry detergent. How many of the little boxes of laundry detergent should she buy to fill the big canister of laundry detergent? Okay. Again, volume equals 14 times 9 times 12. I did the height times length times width. Volume of this one is 11 times um, 3 times 8. All right. So multiply this out. What do you get? The other one? Divide them each. About 5. Five point seven two seven two seven. Yeah, it's just two seven repeated. Yep. All right. It's actually seven. Seventy-two repeated. Benito has fifteen neon tetras in his aquarium. Each neon tetra requires at least two gallons of water. What's the maximum number of neon tetras that Benito could have in this aquarium of his? type of fish all right so here's your gallons equals that many cubic inches so what's the radius of this eight inches so the volume of this equals pi times eight squared times 32 and this time you're actually going to press the pi button because we want to get actual cubic inches out of it so take pi times eight squared times 32 and get a number, and let's round it to the nearest whole number. 6,433. rounded to the nearest whole number. Okay. All right. So if we divide this to figure out the number of gallons, what would we divide by? 231. Twenty-seven point eight five. Let's leave it at twenty-seven point eight five for right now. If each neon tetra needs two gallons of water, can he have all fifteen? No. Can he have fourteen? No. no. Can he have thirteen? Yes. No. Can't cut a fish in half. Benito still has the same fifteen neon tetras, but he gets a different tank. Can he put all fifteen in there? I bet he can, but let's see. Yes. Take 24 yes. times 12 times 16. Is it a bigger tank? What is it? That's all right. 4,000? It's, it's already smaller. Hey, hey. This one was 6,000, buddy. Oh, pictures are deceiving. Divided by 231. 
19.94. Uh-oh. You can have nine fish here. Yeah. All ten, you mean? Yeah. All right. Tavon must add one teaspoon of conditioner for every four gallons of water in his aquarium. If the diameter is 16 and the height is 24, how many teaspoons should he add? All right. So if his diameter is 16, what's his radius? So take pi times 8 squared times the height of 24. Round it to the nearest whole number again. Divide that by 231. So we're going to round, it says round your answer down to the nearest whole number. So we'll just say there's 20 gallons of water in there. If it takes four gallons for every one teaspoon, how many teaspoons will he add? Five teaspoons of conditioner. <laughs> 